Now, here in Toronto, some members of our city council also looking to defund, but the president of Toronto's Police Association is calling the idea ridiculous. Have a listen. They say that we're just going to take money, a 10% cut from police and, and put it to this, these the social uh, agencies. Um, makes no sense at all. Councillors Josh Matlow and Kristen Wong Tan proposing a 10% budget cut, savings of around $122 million that could go toward community support. And this comes in the wake of criticism directed at Toronto police for their handling of Regis Korchinski Paquette's death. She fell from her balcony while officers were in her apartment. Okay, so let's talk more about this. Uh, War 12 Councillor Josh Matlow joins me now to discuss this proposal. Uh, Councillor, first, thank you for joining me this morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm not sure if you did hear that clip from uh, Mike McCormick from the Police yeah. Association. Your immediate response to what he says here, he says this proposal is ridiculous, it's not that easy. Um, immediately, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I, I understand that, uh, that Mike McCormick has a job to do because he represents the Police Association. I understand that there's going to be a lot of heated and emotional rhetoric around this debate. Um, uh, and I'm hearing it from you know, every side you can imagine. What, what I'm hearing, though, from our Black and Indigenous uh, communities and people of colour in the city is that our city council needs to validate and accept that there is systemic racism, not only within the police, but throughout our city and society. And as leaders, as representatives, we need to both be active listeners, but then take action on what we learn. And that's what I'm trying to do, both professionally and personally. Um, our police budget is the single largest line item in the city's budget. Um, we, we give the Toronto Police Service budget um, almost $1.3 billion, and it grows every year. While every other division, whether it be child care, community centres, um, supporting youth at risk, uh, the priorities of our communities have been underfunded for many years. And it's time to correct that imbalance. We're hearing from the community that it's important. My motion, by the way, um, is only looking for uh, 10%. Uh, we have, as you know, voices out there asking for much more than that. We have a council and a mayor, though, that has been resistant to even looking at removing 1%. So I'm trying to open the door, so and I'm trying to make that a priority. So let, let's talk about that 10% number. How did you come upon that 10%, and what does that really mean in the grand scheme of things? Why not ask for more than... If, if, there's, if there are really more reforms that are needed? Uh, well, first of all, that wouldn't pass. Um, again, this council has been resistant to removing anything from the Toronto Police budget. In fact, year after year, it has ballooned. What I'm, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do through this motion is, uh, first of all, this motion actually asked the province to allow Toronto Council to even be, uh, even be privy to what the budget is. Uh, Toronto Council has to vote on the entire big number, but it doesn't actually have the ability to see what that money is used for. So I, as a councillor, want to understand how that money is being invested. Police are, I think, important to our society, and I, I respect the work they do. I want them to do even more work on things like traffic safety. I want them to be there uh, if our home is burgled. I want them to do the good work they do. But it is reasonable to question whether or not police should be the first people who address people who are in mental health distress, are homeless, people with addiction. Um, there are racialized communities who don't have a level of trust where the first person they should come in contact with is somebody with a uniform and a gun. And I think it's reasonable to ask, are there alternatives to policing that we should be exploring like cities around the world are? And could that money be better spent in those areas? We've never allowed ourselves to have that debate because, frankly, there is political pressure uh, to, to kind of keep, keep the status quo. Mm -hmm. And we need to finally open that door. When we look at these numbers and take them apart a little bit further, I think uh, just reading from um, this transcript with Mike McCormick, that uh, so let's say a cut of 10% uh, could potentially mean hundreds of job losses. So estimating maybe 500 positions uh, being lost. Uh, when you see that number, does that, you know, when you look at the balance of community safety, is that going to put that into jeopardy? Mike McCormick represents the association and he's giving you... Um, He's giving you information to, I think, make an argument so that we would be scared of exploring what uh, we're, we're going to have a conversation about at council. That's his job. I, I get it. But it's not 
there's nothing behind it. In other words, um, what my motion does is it actually asks the police themselves to propose a budget that is 10 percent less than what than what they have today. Um, I'm I'm not going after one specific thing like jobs. And frankly, if there are jobs that would be better uh, uh, addressed by, let's say, a youth counselor than a police officer in some cases, let's discuss that. Not because we like or dislike the police, but maybe the youth counselor is better suited and has the expertise to deal with a vulnerable youth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're not even at that debate yet because we don't even know what we're considering adding or cutting. What Mike McCormick is doing, and I understand that, you know, when we have these controversial debates, uh, people of different of sides are going to yeah. make their arguments, but it's not, it's not real yet. Uh, council, the discussion just beginning. So uh, we know that yes. uh, City Council, so you're meeting next June 29th, 30th, so more to come yeah. with this discussion. We appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you.